Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Ed from my Bring Back, and we're sticking with it, learning about classes here. We've been doing it for a while. We're going to be doing it for a while because classes are important, and this sort of object-oriented concept runs pretty deep in Python. How deep, you ask? Well, I'm going to show you part of that today. Let's take a look. All right, so for example purposes, I pulled up an old script from one of the previous videos here in which we defined a Belieber class. And I've also tacked on another line here where we instantiate a Belieber named Hannah. So I'm going to run this script. We'll come over here and look at Hannah. And that's a Belieber instance. We can see, oh, let's see, pardon me. She has an H at the end of her name, first of all. And she also has a favorite. And she has methods. And if we call those methods, they produce effect. So one thing you can do with an instance of a class is see what the name of that class was. And this uses some of those magic words we talked about in the last video. It's a sort of hidden or secret or uh, tacitly put in there, but not explicitly communicated attribute of the instance. So it has the, ins the instance here, Hannah, has an attribute favorite. It also has an attribute class, and class itself has an attribute name. Now, we're going relatively deep into the work here, but I'm doing it for a reason, and you'll realize why in a second. But we'll see if we look at the attribute and the attribute of the attribute. That's going to be Belieber. So Hannah is an instance of class named Belieber. And you're saying, man, this is getting a little goofy, and I, there's a lot going on here that I don't really understand. Why can't we just go back to the simple world of strings and integers? I remember that pleasantly. Things weren't so complicated. I'll say, OK, let's do that. Well, let's make a string called A, and you know, give it some junk value there, an integer called G. Let's say G is equal to 5. Not too complex, right? Check this out, though. If we look at A class name, it doesn't throw an error. It doesn't give us trouble. It says string. Similarly, if we look at G's class name, it says int. Those are classes. A and G are instances of classes. They're objects in Python. Now, they're very special types of objects. They have uh, you know, all kinds of things going on with them. But just like many other instances of classes, they have methods. So gosh, what's a string method we could use on A? We could do something like a dot capitalize, and we get the first letter of a capitalized. So that's a method of class string, and we can use it because a is an instance of class string. So you'll see that this kind of runs throughout all of Python. The whole thing is designed this way. And we can talk a little bit more about why, or what, what's good about that, or what's a limitation about that in future videos. But I want you to realize that this notion of classes and instances, these ideas together and, and sort of what they point at and what they're used for is super integral to Python as a language. So as we continue to focus so hard on classes throughout these videos, I want you to know why we're doing it. And if you hope to really accomplish much of anything right in Python, you're going to need to understand these things inside and out. So again, this is Ed from my Bring Back. Apologize for a video not necessarily high in content today. Just wanted to keep you focused and on track with what we're looking to accomplish and why we're spending the amount of time we're spending on the subjects we're spending it on. So stick with me. Keep coming back. It will get better. Subscribe on YouTube. Share it with people. Buy the t-shirts. Do what you got to do.